Welcome to Amateur Redneck Workshop. I'm Harold and uh, we're going to do something a little different today and before we even get started there uh, I, I guess that I need to mention but we're going to have another uh, part of uh, the amendments to the Constitution. It'll only take a couple of seconds. Okay so this is that part that probably uh, if you're not a U.S. citizen, you're not interested in it. And some U.S. citizens are probably not interested in. But this is the weekly reading of an amendment from the Constitution. We're going to work our way at least up through the first ten. And the second amendment to the U.S. Constitution reads, A well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. And shall not sounds pretty final to me. And <clears throat> interestingly enough, the, uh, the Second Amendment was based partially on uh, the right to keep and bear arms in English common law and was influenced by the English Bill of Rights of uh, 1689. But, uh, Sir William Blackstone described this right as an auxiliary right uh, supporting the natural rights of self-defense, resistance to oppression, and the civil duty to act in concert in defense of the state. Uh, the British don't seem to believe in that anymore, but uh, there you go. They they infected us with that uh, thought, and we hung on to it. All right, that's the end of this. All right, so let's move on to uh, to the next stuff. This is uh, the sort of an early birthday present that I've got to share with you guys, and. I'll show you where it's at. It's in this little box right here. Okay. And it arrived today from Colorado. In fact, uh, I, I bought it online on the internet, which I'm sure is evil and sinful. And uh, I bought it from a place in Colorado. And they, they put it in the mail and sent it to my local gun shop because they've got a federal firearms license. And I went by there today and filled out yet another background check and they found that I'm still not a criminal or a wife beater or any of that sort of thing. And uh, so I got approved and I, I brought the little booger home. So let me change the camera and we'll, uh, we'll do an official unboxing. Okay, let's uh, turn the camera downwards okay. here. Anyway. Like I said, this is an early birthday present. Most of my life, I didn't ever get anything on my birthday. So it's you know, since I passed 65, I've been spoiled quite a lot. We're gonna open it up, and there's a Davidson's guaranteed lifetime replacement card. I guess that should be a handy thing to have, guaranteed lifetime replacement. Um, here is the. Uh, the object of my affections here and uh, I'll lay it out right here it's a uh, Smith & Wesson model 20 SW22 Victory it's in 22 long rifle caliber and hold 10 rounds in the magazine which is something Nancy Pelosi's happy about I guess it's a single action pistol the barrel length is five and a half inches the front sight is a green fiber optic sight. I don't know if you can see that really good. And the rear sight is adjustable and it's also fiber optic. I think you can kind of see down the, down the length of it there. Okay. Um, the grip's polymer and the, the gun weighs 36 ounces, which I guess is pretty heavy for a 22 pistol, but that's what it is. Its overall length is 9.2 inches, which is 23.4 centimeters. I thought I'd throw that in for those of you that are not used to ounces and grams. And the weight is a 1,020 grams. Okay. Um, the overall width is 2.8 centimeters, which is 1.1 inches. And the overall height is 5.6 inches, which is 14.2 centimeters. All right, the frame material is stainless steel, the bolt material is stainless steel, the barrel material is stainless steel, and the finish is satin stainless. So we'll pop that back, 
pull the flag out of the barrel. First time that's been out of there. And pop the magazine out of it. It comes with two magazines. There's one. And I guess the other one is down in here. Here's a lock. That's, uh, that's about as much use as it's likely to ever get. It's right there pulling it out of the box. Um, I don't much care about locking things up like that. I got a safe. Alright, so here's a um, registration, a manual, which is good to read before you use something, and a more product registration stuff. Another magazine and a den rail to go on the top of it. And the really neat thing about this gun is it's very easy to take apart for cleaning. Now this, this den rail that goes on the top has a sight built on it, not as, uh, not as fancy as uh, the one that's on the pistol. But then again, if you put the den rail on there, you're going to put, you know, some kind of an optical sight or something, red dot or something like that on it. Okay, now the, the way this gun comes apart, and I'm going to go ahead and drop the slide. You've got one screw at the bottom of it here. Take your Allen wrench, dump it in there. Mm, that's tight. Alright, we're going to get it apart anyway. Ah, well, we're not going to take it apart right now. I can see that. Anyway, you pull that screw out, the barrel comes off, the slide comes out, and it's it's already broken down for cleaning. Now, I may take it apart when we come back to the range, because I'm going to take you guys to the range with me, and we're going to try it out, okay? And we'll see what we see. Now, along with two magazines here, this has another little feature. This is the reason that I didn't buy it locally, it was because I couldn't find one locally that had the the threaded barrel and the reason for the threaded barrel is I have an application in with the alcohol tobacco and firearms people to send me some alcohol tobacco and firearms well no not really uh, I got an application in to see if they'll let me build a silencer and if they'll let me build it then I've got something I can screw it on with and if they won't let me well I didn't lose anything I still got a Smith & Wesson Okay, uh, sorry about not taking it apart right now, but as tight as that is, I think I'll go and shoot it first, take it apart later, it'll need cleaning, okay? And not only do I have the two magazines that came with it, but because I intend to use this to shoot the steel challenge where you need five magazines, I have bought more, and uh, we'll try out the the ones that I bought separate from the pistol to see if they fit. Well, I mean, I think maybe, yeah, yeah, that fits. I was starting to worry that it wasn't going to fit. <laughs> that would have been something, wouldn't it? All right, so that one's out. That one's in. These uh, these aftermarkets don't seem to fit quite as quite as good as uh, the ones that came with it. Yeah, it does. You just have to move the bottom, move the bottom plastic piece back a little bit and do not squeeze on too tight. So, now I've got the full, full complement of magazines that are required or at least more convenient to have for shooting the uh, Steel challenge. There you are. So, I guess we go on next with a, a little story here. And uh, <laughs> this is not about Bubba, this is a story about me. It's something that really happened back in, uh, oh, I guess around 1980. Uh, I was working overseas, and while I was there, the uh, local flora and fauna intestinal type uh, sort of changed me around to a new guy you know it uh, it not only kept me sitting on the throne most of the time about two weeks out of every three but uh, 
I developed a habit of generating a lot of gas and this wasn't just your average gas this is good stuff you know and so I was, I was starting to be, be known for gas uh, even though I was afraid to let it go but we had uh, where I was living there it was on the Rastoner Peninsula and they had a mail center and that's where you went to get your mail and that sort of thing and, and they had a bulletin board on the wall with all the latest little articles and stuff that you might be interested in and believe me if you're in the middle of a, of a desert where there's nothing much to do you're interested in everything that's that shows up in the mail center so I went in there and there was a couple of British guys standing in front of the bulletin board talking and I was trying to read sort of around them to read the, the notices and I guess to devil the yank you know they uh, they just kept on talking and then all of a sudden you know not not of my own free will or anything but all of a sudden I started to exude this uh, this green cloud of gas and uh, it was one of those silent floaters you know and it kind of swept over toward the British guys because they were they were kind of downwind to me and the guy that was doing all the talking was standing there and you could sort of see this thing come sweeping up his face it just sort of like someone had taken a, a, a window shade and raised it up and there was another expression underneath and he's looking at his wedding and she says bleeping hell mate that'll do for me and both of them psh, doom they were gone <coughs> so uh, I had this guy a uh, Nigerian engineer that was riding back and forth with me in that name of Kwame Achimpong and uh, I went out to, to the truck, he had waited, he didn't want to go in the mail center and uh, I got in and I tried to tell him what happened and I couldn't because I was laughing so much and every time I'd start to tell him <laughs> I'd see the look on that guy's face and I'd start laughing again and uh, I, I guess Kwame figured I'd finally gone off the deep end because he didn't ride with me the next day. Um, you know, things like that happened though. At, uh, one of the many adventures in being an old redneck and having lots and lots of gas, you know. I can't hardly wait to get this out to the range, but it's too late in the day to go out there. Now it'll be, it'll be closed shortly, so we'll just have to wait until in the morning. And I've got some targets. i got some of these targets that show when you, when you hit, they change colors. And... We'll, uh, we'll share the first shots with this guy. All right, so let me turn off the camera and uh, it'll magically be tomorrow. The next time you see me, we'll be at the range. All right? Okay, first shots ever from this little booger, at least for me. Safety. Not safe, That's upper right, huh? All right, let's try again. Okay, I'd have to say the sights are on, and I'm off a little bit, but but that's not too bad. We'll move now to the 25 yards and see what we can see. Now that I can see the sights are here, we are 25 on. yards. I can't zoom out anymore, so I'm going to rest the pistol first time around. Then second time around, I'll do it offhand.
Looks like I'm getting near to the near to the center. Not too good though. And that's empty and I guess I can put on my readers and see what what the camera is showing here well I got all around the center but I didn't get in it I don't think no oh well well yeah there's a couple of them that got close to the center all right let's do it offhand this time though no bracing of anything. See if this comes out any good. Oh. Gotta take off the readers or I can't see anything. Now. on with the reader so I can see the camera. Hmm. Boy, offhanded I spread them out even worse, didn't I? <laughs> All right. I don't think you even hit the target at one time offhanded, so let's do it again here. Let's see what we see. See, I need another magazine. So I'm we got to reload okay. here. We'll try to do better off-handed this time. I'll use my left eye. Yeah, I got to target then. Still not hitting the center, too high right. You bring it down. Is that any better? Still high right, huh? Got one near the center. Okay. Maybe one more magazine, and then we'll move to to the rim fire range. I mean, to the uh, to the tin can alley. I don't. I get it said.
All right, so I'm consistently shooting a little to the right. So I'll have to adjust the sight a little bit left before I use it for competition. But I think I'm ready to go to the rim fire range. I mean, uh, tin can alley, whatever. Now this is easy with a rifle, but not so easy with a pistol. And definitely not so easy with a pistol that I just got and I'm not used to. Let's see if you can see that in sights. Uh, no, not really. Okay, we'll give it a shot anyway. Well, that's better than I usually do with my Ruger, so I guess I'll own it. <laughs> Time to All reload. Right. Time to try again. Still considering me and a pistol and 20 yards is probably probably not too bad. <laughs> of course, there's guys that would have never missed any of them. Time to reload, reload again. This is probably about enough video shooting that uh, dueling tree. Oh. I think I'm getting the hang of it. I was aiming too high every time. Not bad. All right, that's enough video. I'll play by myself. Well, I said we'd take it apart for cleaning when we got back from the range, so I guess I'm stuck with taking it apart. One thing I didn't point out earlier is right there on the trigger, there's a little screw to adjust the, uh, to adjust the, over over travel of the trigger. I want to make sure that people did notice that that's empty, it's locked open. All right. Not like I hadn't already checked it, but I know how the safety Nazis are. And there. Let's see if I can get it to un undo. Whoa. We don't wipe out the. A little screw. <laughs> ah, there we go. It's loose now. I need uh, you one with a handle on it, don't I? Oh well. All right, the screw comes out. Let's go ahead and drop the slide. This comes off. The slide comes out. There you are. It's as broke down as you need it for cleaning. And uh, there you got it. Everything breaks down for cleaning really quick and easy. One screw. So <laughs> this really is way ahead of my uh, my Ruger, which sometimes I'll spend about 10 minutes trying to get my Ruger back together because of the little spring in the in the back of it. So, we put this little booger back like this, put the screw back in him. I guess I probably ought to latch it down good and tight like it was when I took it apart. I think that's probably the best move. Alright, let's latch her down good and tight. And here we are. 
functioning all over again. That's easy to clean. I guess you didn't see that, but everything is right for the world. There's one thing I discovered. These magazines, they're pretty much the same ones as in the Smith & Wesson 22A with the exception of this little button. On the 22A, that little button sticks way out. I'll get one for you. Oh, hang on a minute and I'll get one out of the bag. This magazine is from a 20, from the Smith & Wesson 22A. This one here. This one is from the Smith & Wesson Victory. I use my calipers and they sure look the same to me. The only thing stopping this guy from going in is that little plunger on the side there. And you see it. I'm pretty sure if I were to take it apart, put this guy on it, that uh, that the magazines would work. I guess that's that's one way to get you to buy a whole new set of magazines for your pistol. Oh well, they do look very much alike, don't they? <laughs> I think they are. All right, so that's that's it for today. Uh, hopefully, uh, you'll subscribe and click the like button or the dislike button or something, but leave a comment. Whatever you do, leave a comment. All right, we'll see you guys later. Bye.